Hello everybody, how's everybody doing today, or tonight, this evening? Are you ready for the end time harvest? It's coming. There's an end time harvest coming. Okay? It's an end time harvest of humans. We just harvested millions of turkeys for our Thanksgiving. Christmas. We just harvested millions of pigs for ham, for Christmas for ham and New Year's. And we just harvested all sorts of crop, crops, corn and whatnot. Well, there's coming a harvest of humans. Okay? Revelation uh, explains that pretty clearly that's coming a harvest of humans okay but that's not what I'm on here to talk about <clears throat> I'm on here to talk about Christmas I know Christmas was yesterday so that makes me a day late and a dollar short but uh, I think it's something that needs to be talked about I'm not gonna I'm not gonna drag this out it's really not it shouldn't be anything um, of great importance whether or not you celebrate Christ's birthday on the 25th or not. Some people have made this into a major issue. Okay? Some people are, they, are, they believe you're going to go, God is going to sentence you to hell for worshiping. Uh, celebrating Christ's birthday on the 25th of December. Okay? There are some people believe God is going to reject you on Judgment Day because you uh, celebrate Jesus Christ's birthday on the 25th of December. It's just We're just getting ridiculous. What is happening? What is happening? Actually, what is happening? We're in we're in the last days, and there's going to be more and more confusion. Okay, more and more. This is just confusion. This is just more and more confusion. You got the people. You got people uh, condemning others for celebrating Christ's birthday on the twenty fifth. Um, you got people condemning people for not keeping the laws in the Old Testament. Um, you know, you got uh, condemning others for all sorts of things, for eating certain foods. You're going to hell if you eat pork. Okay? This is what they're saying. Nonsense. Okay? We're, we can eat what we want to eat. We are New Testament believers. New Testament believers, we are the New Testament. We do not hold to the Old Testament anymore. Okay? You, we, we, Christ brought us into the New Testament of the new agreement, the new contract. Okay? But what I want to talk about is this Christmas thing. Listen, the Bible is very clear. If you want to pay homage, worship, praise God for Jesus Christ's birthday on the 25th of December, on the 25th of September, on the 25th of November, on the 25th of any November, you can do that. Okay? You can do that. You can you can praise God for his the Lord Jesus Christ for his birth on any day you want there's first of all we don't know what day he was born okay we don't know what day he was born so you can choose whatever day you want to just say you know I'm gonna set this day aside to worship Jesus Christ or to praise God for sending Jesus Christ into the world you can do that on any day you want. There's nothing in the Bible that tells you that you should not uh, 
give honor to God for the birth of Jesus Christ on the 25th of December. Okay? A lot of confusion, a lot of deception because people don't know the Bible. First of all, most of them don't know that they're New Testament believers now. They're not old. We're not Old Testament believers. Okay? We're not we're not under the Judea Jew, Jews, we're not in Judaism. Okay? We don't practice the Judaism Jew the Jews religion. Okay? Now I know people there's some black people believe that they are Jews and we very well could be. Actually I believe we are. But I don't practice Judaism Judaism. I don't keep the Feast of Trumpets, the Feast of Tabernacles, and what are those other feasts? All those feasts? I don't keep that. You don't. You shouldn't either. You don't have to keep that. We're New Testament believers now. Okay? We're New Testament believers. We don't have to keep all that. Even the Ten Commandments. Now we have to keep the Ten Commandments because they are list. They are listed in the New in the New Testament. Except the uh, except the uh, the Sabbath, keeping the Sabbath, uh, keeping it holy, you know, uh, on Saturday, we're not we don't have to keep that commandment because Jesus Christ is our Sabbath now. He's our Sabbath. Jesus Christ is Lord of the Sabbath. Okay, Jesus Christ. He he didn't keep the Sabbath. Okay, I mean, not like, uh, not like we thought he would. Okay, he he went he went and picked corn and uh, who was a David, and the Lord went and picked corn and they ate and did some other things. Healed on the Sabbath. Okay, so so no, now you gonna keep the cat Sabbath. Better than Christ. You gonna you gonna keep the Sabbath better than Christ, and He's Lord of the Sabbath. That doesn't make sense. People, we better get to know our Bible. We better get to understand our Bible because deception is going to grow in the last days. Confusion is going to grow in the last days, and you're going to have to know your Bible. The Bible said, even the elect will be deceived if it were possible. Okay? Why is it won't be po- why 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 would it not be possible? Because the elect is going to know God's word. God the Bible said, Your word is a light unto my feet and a lamp unto my path. In in the tribulation, in in the last days, and the days are going to be dark. You're going to need light. That light, the the word of God is going to be your light and your lamp. Okay, in order for you not to be deceived. Now I'm going to read something here. I'm going to show you something in the scripture, man. All of you are all talking about this not keeping Christmas. Now I'm not really, I don't really celebrate Christmas. I mean, I'm just not that type of person. Buy, I don't buy gifts and all that stuff. There's nothing wrong with it, though, if you want to do that. I mean, that's how they celebrated Jesus Christ coming into the world, with gifts, right? And uh, Father God, El Elyon, our Father, He gave us a gift on the day Christ was born. That gift was His Son. So, I mean, so if you want to exchange gifts in memory of of Christ's birth like like it all started that's how it all started back there with gifts okay uh, that's how you want to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ is exchanging gifts there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with that okay you people getting caught up in legalism what is what is legal and what is I mean we are, we are free Okay, we're free from uh, these law, a lot of those laws and, and 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 legalism. Okay, we're free from that. If you want to give gifts, 
uh, in celebrating Christ's birthday, that's fine. There's nothing in the Bible says that you shouldn't be exchanging gifts. Okay? There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, now if if um, if when Christmas comes, you know, they say, well, it's a pagan holiday. Listen, Satan has always hijacked or tried to hijack anything the Lord do. He has always done that. He has always attempted to hijack, even when God created this world. What do you do? When he created the, this world and created Adam and Eve, he, here comes the devil. He tried to hijack God's creation. Did he not? Of course he did. Okay? And when you when you're born into this world and God called you to be a prophet, called you to be a minister, called you to be whatever, Satan is coming to hijack your life. Because he don't want you to be a minister or a prophet or he wants you to be a pimp or a drug dealer or, or a hope or, or something of that nature. See? So whatever day Christ was born. Satan wants to hijack it and put his stuff in there. Even on Easter, we want to celebrate the resurrection. Whatever day we decide to celebrate the resurrection of Christ, it's fine. It's okay. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter what day. All right? It doesn't matter what day. Uh, it, it doesn't matter what day. But Satan, of course, he's going to try to hijack that day. With his people, with his stuff, okay. Yes, it, it 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 Christmas might have something to do. Christmas don't have the birth of Christ, Santa Claus, reindeers, snowman, metal elves, Saint Nicholas. They don't have anything to do with the birth of Christ. None whatsoever. What what? They don't have nothing to do with the birth of Christ. But that's Satan trying to hijack. Now they got the Grinch. The Grinch in Christmas. Now they're scaring the kids. These silly adults. Scaring the kids on Christmas. On the day we're supposed to be celebrating Jesus Christ's birthday. You got these grown silly adults. Frightening, frightening and scaring the children with the Grinch. And laughing. They just sit down laughing. Laughing at the kids. Kids scared out of their minds. And they sit down laughing at the children. Okay. Satan trying to hijack Christmas. Or hijack the day we are celebrating the Lord's birth. It's, it's just as simple. It's not really hard to figure out. Okay. And if you want to celebrate Christ. Uh, with songs like Silent Night, Silent Night, uh, Joy to the World, that's fine. All those good songs of singing about Christ and His birth and uh, what are all those good, wonderful songs. But then uh, Satan comes along and he he wants you to sing Jingle Bells, uh, Saint Nicholas coming down the chimney. He wants you to sing Rudolph the Red No Reindeer. He don't want you to sing about Jesus Christ. He wants you to sing about Rudolph. He wants you to sing about uh, what's this? Frosty the Snowman. Now he's got the Grinch, a demon, uh, uh, people dressed up in a demon costume, a demonic costume for Christmas on the day we celebrate the birth of Christ. Now he got people dressing up in a demonic costume. Boy, y'all better get in this word. Because they have y'all tied up and bound up with legalism. You can celebrate Christ's birthday any day you want. You can celebrate Christ's resurrection any day you want. You can celebrate Christ anything any day you want. That's, we're free. We're New Testament believers now. We can do that. Okay? But Satan want See, see, we know that... It's a, well, it's a pagan holiday. It's a pagan holiday. They say it's a pagan holiday. And... Uh, 
I don't know what all they say that uh, the pagans injected into Christmas or merged with Chris Christmas. You know, but they said that the pagans, it, it was actually a pagan holiday. The Roman, Roman Catholics has something to do with uh, merging these uh, two religions together. Uh, the pagans with the Christians. Well, okay, the pagans going to be pagans. They're going to celebrate Christmas or any other day, whatever way they want to. They're going to get drunk. They're going to get high. They're going to play their dirty music. They're going to have orgies. They're going to have sex. They're going to fight. They're going to, they're going to do all the things pagans and sinners do on Christmas or Easter or any other day. That's them. They're going to sing about the reindeer. They're going to sing about the snowman. They're going to sing about... Uh, he going to sing about his naked boyfriend. She going to sing about her naked girlfriend. So on and so forth. Okay? That's them. That, they, that's their world. You don't have anything to do with that. You going over here with God's people or whoever you with, God's people, the church, and you celebrate Christ. Okay? In honor of Him. To honor Him. Okay? You ain't got no, you don't have to have anything to do with them celebrating, you know, commercializing Christmas and commercializing Easter. You don't have to have anything to do with that. Go on over here, go on over here to church. Celebrate the Lord's birthday. Okay? With praise and worship. Even exchanging gifts to one another, showing each other love, because God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. So we, we we can celebrate each other and celebrate Christmas by showing love to each other, by giving to each other. There's nothing wrong with that, people. It's nothing wrong with that. It's nothing wrong with celebrating Christ's birthday on Christmas. Is what I'm saying in all these words. Okay, it's nothing wrong with it. Now, if the pagans celebrate Christmas by shooting each other, or by raping each other, or smoking drugs, or shooting up heroin, or taking uh, fentanyl and, and overdosing on it, if that's what they want to do, okay, if they want to bow down, bow to Satan on Christmas, if they want to uh, bow to the sun god on Christmas, that's what they want to do, that's what they're going to do. They ain't got nothing to do with me. It don't have anything to do with me. Listen, the Bible said right here. Now here Paul is talking. Paul here discusses the proper attitude Christians should have toward each other in debatable areas of conduct. Things that are not clearly stated to be wrong. He says... That we are not to judge one another in such matters because God has received both the weaker and stronger believer. Okay? Because we can differ in good conscience and because uh, we shall all be judged by the Lord. Listen. Here in uh, Romans 14 it says him that is weak in the faith receive ye receive he's weak in the faith okay he might think it's wrong to eat certain types of food but again he thinks it's in the Old Testament he don't he haven't he haven't understood yet that we're in the New Testament okay so he's weak in the faith him that is weak in the faith receive him anyway okay But not to doubtful disputations. Disputations, I'm sorry. Okay, not in disputations, debating. For listen, it says, the second verse says, For one believeth that he may eat all things, like me. I believe I can eat anything. Another who is weak in the faith, he think, well, I can only eat herbs. Okay? He don't know that, man, you can eat anything, but he don't know that. He thinks, no, I can't eat anything. 
I can only eat herbs. I can't eat pork. I can only eat this or that. He's weak in the faith. Okay? And not only does it apply to meat and food, but it applies to many other things. Okay? Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. Okay? I'm not going to despise you because you don't eat. I'm not, I'm not going to despise you because you don't eat pork. And vice versa. Don't despise me because I eat pork. And let not him that eateth not judge him that eateth. Right? For God hath received him. God has received me and he has received you. Okay? So don't despise me because I eat pork. I'm not going to despise you because you don't. Okay? One of us just happened to be stronger in the faith than the other. Listen, who art thou to judge another man's servant? I can't judge you like that. Not in, not, not in this, that capacity anyway. I can't judge you. Okay? To his own master he stand or falls. Okay? Only Christ can judge him. Ye, yea, he shall be holding up for God is able to make him stand. Okay? One man, listen to this now. One man is esteemed one day above all, above another. Okay? Okay? Some people esteem Christmas a better day than other days. Some people esteem Easter a better day than the other days. Right? Some people celebrate Christmas. Some people celebrate Easter. He thinks this is a holy day. This is a righteous day. Some people think the Sabbath is a holy day. Saturday. They don't know. They're, they still don't know they're New Testament believers. So he's weak in the faith, as the Bible said here earlier. He's weak in the faith. Well, I'm not going to condemn him for that. Let him go to church on Saturday, on Sabbath as much as he wants to. If he thinks that's what's going to save him, well, let him go. See? Some people, some people, oh, uh, no, but I won't say that. But he thinks that that's what's going to save him, so I, no, I'm not going to stop you. But don't condemn me if I don't go to church on the Sabbath, on Saturday. I got to go to work on Saturday. Okay? Don't condemn me if I go to church on Sunday. I can go to church any day I want. I can praise God any day I want. We are New Testament believers. This is what the scripture just says. Who art thou to judge another man's service? To his own servant. To his own master he stands of all. Okay, I'm the one who's going to stand before Christ. You, you, you can't judge me for that. On this particular matter. One man esteem one day above another. Another esteem every day alike. See, I can just say, hey, every day. See, I don't, the only reason why I really celebrate Christmas and Easter and all that is because my family does it. My family does it. And uh, the church, they do it. Celebrate Christmas, celebrate Easter. You know, I'm around people. The job lets me off for Christmas. So I go ahead and go along with the flow. You know, if the job tell me, the job say, we're going to let you off for Christmas, I'm not going to say, well, I'm not taking off for Christmas because I don't believe in celebrating Christmas. So all you people out there that don't believe in celebrating Christmas, next time they tell you to take off from work for Christmas, don't take off. Just go back to the job the next day and be ready to work. Let's see what happens. Okay? You just stop this nonsense, man. Okay? And you think God going to put you in hell if you if you uh, take off from work for Christmas and the job requires it? Is that what it is? It's nonsense. Okay? So that's the reason why I really celebrate Christmas. Anyway. I mean, I'm just not one of those kind of people. Now, I would love, I love getting into Bible study about Christmas. I love that, man. I'm, I'm all game for that. Okay? I'm game for that. Bible study about Christmas, anything to do with, with the Bible, studying Christmas, oh, yeah. But uh, just me actually uh, 
celebrating Christmas in some other way? No. But as I said, I just kind of go along with my family, go along with my job, go along with my church. They do it, so I just kind of do it. Okay? It's all about love, y'all. It's all about love, man. Okay? It's all about love, fellowship. Okay, what am I going to do? Okay, what you going to do? Your, your, your family, your mother and father and whatnot celebrating Christmas, and you 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 don't want to celebrate Christmas because you think it's evil, so you sitting in a corner somewhere. Okay? They want you... They want you to celebrate Christmas with them, but you're so righteous. You're so righteous and you're so holy. Okay? You can't celebrate Christmas. It's a pagan holiday. Well, what day, what day is it okay to celebrate the birth of Christ? Or you just don't celebrate the birth of Christ? Or you don't care? Okay? His birth is more important than anybody's birth. If anybody, you celebrate your birth, wouldn't you? You celebrate your birthday. You celebrate your mama's birthday. You celebrate your wife's birthday. You celebrate your husband's birthday. But you don't want to celebrate Christ's birthday. That's, that's a pagan. That's paganism. You say that's paganism. But you don't want to celebrate his birthday? Surely you're not greater, you're greater than him. Surely your mother's not greater than him. You celebrate her birthday. Right? Listen, the Bible said one man esteemed one day above another. Another esteem every day alike. I esteem, I'm the kind of person I esteem every day alike to me. Even my own birthday. But like I said, the only reason why I do get into celebrating this type of stuff is because other people do it. I wouldn't even, probably wouldn't even acknowledge my own birthday. I just don't, I'm just not into that. Okay? To me, it's just like Yes, the day I was born, 65 years ago, but I mean, it's just another day, too. Okay? I don't take no take myself out to dinner and buy myself no shoes. and I don't do none of that nonsense. Okay, but if that's what you want to do, that's fine. I'm not going to bother you about that. See? That's a special day to you. Okay? If, if you want to celebrate Easter... Thanksgiving, that's fine. Nothing wrong with having a day to give God thanks. People, come on now. There's nothing wrong with that. You people talking about that's a that's a what do you call that? You call that some kind of that's a bad day or something. That's not that's not good. There's nothing wrong with taking a day out of the year, the entire country, giving God thanks. Yeah, many Indians was killed and slaughtered, and yeah. Okay, but we still have a lot to be grateful for. Okay, we still have a lot to be grateful for. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that, people. Come on. Um. See, some people esteem every day just like any other day. Now I'm glad I'm glad these holidays came along come along because that gives me a break from work. Okay, that's that's a day I can just kind of take a break. So I'm glad for them. All right, but if it wasn't for the holiday, I'll just go and go to work because uh, same with my birthday or any other day, I just go to work. If the, but if the job if my job says take off, then we take off. So I'll be looking forward to those holidays. For one, and you guys complaining about people going to church on Sundays. That's a blessing, man, that we are off on Sundays. Okay? That's a blessing. See, we are not to, we we don't we don't have to keep the Sabbath the Saturday and and going to church on Saturday is not keeping the Sabbath. Keeping the Sabbath is honoring the Lord. Honoring the Lord, and that whole day is <clears throat> given to Him. <clears throat> okay, you are to rest that entire day. Sabbath does not mean go to church. The Sabbath is a day for rest. You do nothing. You do nothing but just you don't even supposed to go through the kitchen and make yourself some food. Did you know that? 
You don't supposed to do anything. You don't supposed to do nothing but rest. And you have food. You supposed to already have your food already made, prepared, and you eat. I think that's the way that goes. The Sabbath was not made. <coughs> Man wasn't made for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for us. The Sabbath shouldn't control us. Okay? That, I'm glad they started going to church on Sundays. You know, we want to say, well, that the Catholics started that. And, and, and the Catholic, uh, that's the Antichrist. Okay, that's people that, I, there are people on the internet teaching that people that go to church on Sunday have taken the mark of the beast. Yes, it's people on, it's, there are people teaching that if you go to church on Sundays, you, are, you have taken the mark of the beast. There are people, who is this? That's the Seventh Day Adventists. That's a group that teach. That's a group in the Seventh Day Adventist Church. Yeah, that's them. Seventh Day Adventists, Sabbath Day Keepers. They teach if you go to church on Sundays, you've taken the mark of the beast. But we know Paul planned church services on Sunday, and I'm glad he did because now, now I get the Sabbath day off, which is Saturday, and I get Sunday off. Okay, in the millennial reign, you're going to get some more days off. When Christ comes here, he's going to give you more days off. He's going to give you more time off. What are you complaining about? The closer we get to Christ, if you are in him, the easier he's going to make life for you. Oh, man, come on, man. The closer you get to Christ, the closer we get to the end, the easier Christ is going to make the easier Christ is going to make life for you. Okay, see, I think Paul started that. Uh, no, I don't think he started, but there are, se there are several places in the Bible, in the New Testament, where the Christians started meeting on Sunday. One of the places is 1 Corinthians 16 and 2. The Christians started meeting. There ain't no Roman Catholics started that. The Roman Catholics didn't start meeting us, start us meeting on Sunday. The New Testament uh, apostles uh, started meeting on Sundays. I just gave you one scripture here, 1 Corinthians 16 and 2. Okay, the Roman Catholics didn't do that. People, y'all better get to know your Bible because this deception is growing. And it's causing more and more confusion. People don't know their Bible. Man, just read your Bible. So if you want, so they started way back then uh, going to church on Sunday. That's, that's great. Because now, like I said, I get Sunday off and I get Saturday off. I get two days off. So it used to be you just got one day off, that Sabbath day. And you work six days. Now I can get I can get two days off and work five days. And if I want to work six days, I work six days. And listen, when Christ comes, He's gonna give you more time off. So if you don't like what you get now, I don't know what you're going to do then. Because he's going to give you more time off. Okay? He's going to give you more time off. Because the millennial reign itself will be the Sabbath day. The millennial reign itself, the 1,000 year millennial reign itself, will be the Sabbath day. He's going to give everybody some rest. Everybody, even the people that that wasn't saved or or, or went into the millennial reign, uh, as mortals, they're going to get rest. Okay, we might be getting three or four days off in the millennial reign. I don't know. I can't say for sure. I don't know. But it's going to be a day of rest for everyone. So if you are, you got a problem with us taking off on Sundays, going to church on Sundays, or having a day of rest on Sundays and Saturday, I don't know what you're going to do when Christ gets here.
Man, you guys complain. Some of you guys complain about every little bit. You find all kind of faults in the Word of God. Well, what do you want? You know, what do you want? Listen, it says here in the fifth verse, Romans 14 and 5, getting back. One man is esteemed one day above another. Another is esteemed every day of life. I esteem every day of life. The only reason why I don't is because, I'm, like I said, I'm riding with the family, riding with the job, riding with the church. And so either they celebrate it or I celebrate it. I just do it because they do it. Okay? It's not a sin. Okay, I enjoy them. I enjoy being with them. Okay? And so we all just enjoy each other. It's great. Okay? It's great. God, God loves that. He loves that. He loves us to celebrate each other and with each other and get along. Okay? One man is staying one day above another. One man thinks one day is greater than the other. Another is staying every day just alike, like myself. And that every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. You be fully persuaded in your own mind. Don't try to persuade me. Don't try to tell me that what I'm that because I'm working on Saturday that I'm going to hell. If you're not fully persuaded in your own mind that you are not saved for working on Saturdays, then you got to work on your own mind, your own self. You got to be fully persuaded in yourself. Don't try to get everybody else involved in that. Okay? I hope I said that right. Now, he that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord. Okay? I regard every day unto the Lord. That's what I do. Every day. Every day is a day to remember Christ. I don't just wait till Sunday. I wait till Christmas. I wait till Easter. Every day. This is me right in the sixth verse. He that regarded the day. Regarded it unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day. Due to the Lord. He, it says. Regardeth not the day. He that regardeth not the day. To the Lord he doeth not regard it. If you don't regard the day. You do that to the Lord. You do that to him. If you don't regard the day that everybody is celebrating the Lord's birthday, the day, the day everybody is celebrating the Lord's resurrection, you don't regard that day, the Bible says you do that to the Lord. Well, that ain't the Lord. You said, well, that ain't the Lord's birthday. I don't believe that's his birthday. Okay. You do that to him then. You still do that to him. Instead of you just saying, you know what, I don't know when the Lord's birthday is, but I'm going to take the time to celebrate the fact that he was born. And I'm going to do it on this date with everybody else. Okay? As I said, the people that want to, the pagans, the sinners, the whatnot, that want to get drunk on that day, and want to party on that day, want to shoot each other on that day, want to have orgies on that day, Want to jump off the Empire State Building on that day? Whatever they want to do, that's them. They want to, they want to make love to the Grinch. They want to make love to Santa Claus going up the chimney and going down the chimney. That's them. They celebrate. They regard that day as unto the Lord. That's them. But I don't have nothing to do with that. Okay. I'm going to over here and I'm going to celebrate the Lord's birthday my way. So don't get mixed up with those people over there. Those pagan pagans and sinners and whatnot. You, you, you render your praise and admonition to the Lord uh, the way you want to. Okay? He that regardeth not the day to the Lord, he doeth not regard it. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> he that 
He that eateth to the Lord, for he giveth thanks, and he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not and giveth thanks. Okay? Now this is talking about <coughs> this is talking about things that the Bible does not say whether or not it's wrong or right. But what the Bible is saying is that you are you have the freedom to choose. If you want to celebrate Christ's birthday on the 25th, or you want to celebrate Christ's birthday on the 26th, or you want to celebrate Christ's birthday on the 1st of the year, it's up to you. That's what this is saying. Okay? Same, same, same applies to food. To food. If you think you... If food, this, all right, I forgot why I left off at but you be persuaded in your own mind that uh, what you're doing is right. Okay, he that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord. He that regardeth not the day to the Lord doth he doth not regard. He that eateth eateth to the Lord, for he giveth thanks to God. And he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not and give thanks to God. Okay? If you're persuaded that pork is wrong, then pork is wrong. For you, not for me. If you're persuaded that catfish is wrong to eat, then you're persuaded. It's wrong for you. It's not wrong for me. So don't try to persuade don't try to put that guilt trip on me and other people. That's your persuasion. That's your conviction. Okay? If you think uh, celebrating Christ's birthday on the 25th is wrong, then that's wrong for you. Don't do it. But don't don't come around other people and spoil their day. Okay? These scriptures are, are letting us know that we have to free these particular scriptures. We have the freedom to choose on some things. Now there are some things that we are commanded to do and commanded not to do. But this, you have the freedom to choose. Listen, there's another scripture in uh, Colossians. Colossians uh, 2 and 16. It says, Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink are in respect of a holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath day. Listen, y'all. This is very clear. Okay, this is very clear. It says, Let no man therefore judge you. Man, get out of here with that stuff. Okay? Get on out of here with that. We're supposed to go to church on Saturdays. It says right here, Let no man judge you, therefore, uh, on how to, whether or not to keep the Sabbath. Get out of here with that. Let no man judge you on whether or not you, should eat, you can eat pork or eat shrimp or rabbit. or Get out of here. Okay? That's for you. If you're persuaded in your own mind that you cannot eat that stuff or you shouldn't go to church on Sunday or you should go to church on... As again, as I said, as again, again, as I said, the Sabbath is not the day, it's not the day to go to church. The Sabbath is made for a day of rest. Okay? I'm going to read this 16 verse again. Listen to what it says. Because I think Paul wrote this Colossians. Because he's 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 letting us know. He said, false teachers were evidently, these are false teachers, y'all, evidently insisting on abstinence from certain kinds of food, like pork and whatnot, catfish, whatever. And observ observance of certain days 
like Christmas or whatever, uh, the feast feast days. Okay, these Paul says are shadows that have been dispersed by the coming of Christ. Okay. These are shadows of the thing, the real thing to come, of, of the real thing that is to come. See, the Sabbath day when it first started in the Old Testament, it was a shadow of Christ and the millennial reign. It was a shadow of those things. It was a shadow of the 1,000 year day, day of rest. That Sabbath day that they, that they, uh, is held uh, that they honored back then was a shadow of the millennial reign. It was a shadow. See, right now, our day of rest now is faith in Jesus Christ. We haven't gotten to the millennial reign yet. But our day of rest now, the day of rest, our Sabbath right now, because Jesus Christ is our Sabbath. Our, our, our Sabbath now is our trust and faith in Jesus Christ and what he has done for us on the cross. We can rest now in what he has done. He has. He said it is finished. He has conquered death. Okay? Listen. Um, he has uh, conquered death. You being complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Uh, that whole chapter, the second chapter, talks about uh, Christ uh, defeating death on the cross. And now we are to put our trust and our hope in him. We are to rest in him. We are to give up struggling, trying to keep the law. Trying to keep the law and come up to par. Okay? We are to rest and say, Christ has done it. He has conquered all. Okay? And our rest is in Him. So the Sabbath day was a shadow of this. Okay? The, back in the Old Testament, that, that seventh day was a shadow of this. And, yet, and, 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 and the millennial reign is yet to come, which is the completion of the Sabbath day. Okay, let no man, the Bible said, let no man therefore judge you in meat or food or even in drink. Or in, because see, listen, there's some people, God don't bother them about drinking wine. But he don't want me to drink wine. Okay, but some people, God, I can't, I can't bother nobody, tell them, man, you shouldn't drink wine. Well, that might not be his conviction. That's my conviction. Okay? I mean, I, I can't, I can't even, I have to be careful even with coffee. Well, some people can drink all the coffee they want. Well, I can't. That's my conviction, though. See? That's my conviction. That's not his. Let no man, therefore, judge you and meet or in drink, or in respect of the whole of a holy day. Okay, y'all, y'all see that? Okay, you ought to keep the the feast of tabernacles. Man, I can't be, keep no feast of tabernacles. Those are shadows of something to come in the future. Okay, those are just shadows of something that is coming in the future. Feast of trumpets. Those are shadows. That's like a shadow of the real thing that's coming. Okay? It's a holy day. New moons. Don't let no man judge you in respect of holy days and our respect of new moons. Or even the Sabbath day. Get out of here with that stuff, man. Get out of here with that. You ought to keep you ought to go to church on Saturdays. 
You know, that's 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 your legalistic junk. Okay? That's your legalistic junk. You shouldn't we you shouldn't uh celebrate Christmas. And 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 we got that scripture in Jeremiah, what is it? Jeremiah Jeremiah ten, three and four, talking about the Christmas tree. Well, actually that I, it looks like to me that the scripture is not talking about a Christmas tree. It's talking about an idol. They chopped down a tree and carved it into an idol. I guess what that's talking about. But I guess that could apply to a tree. Uh, you know, I don't know. But it looks more like to me it's talking about an idol. Okay, and the 17th verse says that, that no, in the 16th verse says, Let no man therefore judge you in, in regards to meat, drink, or in respect to the holy days, or new moons, or the Sabbaths. The 17th verse says, which are a shadow of things to come. But the body is of Christ. All these things represented Christ. Okay? All these things pointed to Christ. Alright? All these things centered around Christ. All these things had to do with Christ. Okay? Everything, all this has to do with Christ. I can't keep no feast of trumpets. I got to go to work. I got to pay my bills. The Bible said if a man don't take care of his own home, he's worse than an infidel. You are worse than an unbeliever. The Bible said you are worse than an unbeliever. You don't take care of your own house. I got to go to work. I can't keep no feast of trumpets. I'm having bread. I can't do that. <laughs> Feast of Tabernacles. I can't keep all that stuff. I can't do that. Man, come on. You guys just, you guys are, I don't, I don't get it, man. Especially, especially you people that study the Bible all the time. You study this Bible all the time. And you don't know that the Sabbath is not we don't. We are not to keep the Sabbath. Do not to. We don't have to go to church on Saturdays. Okay, Saturday you can go to church any day. God is honored by that. Okay, matter of fact, the Bible is, the Bible told us don't forsake the assemblies of yourselves. Okay, don't forsake each other in, uh, in the assembly of yourself. But you can go to church any day. There was a woman named Anna, I think, in the New Testament when Christ was when Christ was first born. I think it's in Matthew. The Bible says she was in the temple night and day, fasting and praying. Okay? And the New Testament had not been implemented yet. But she was in the temple night and day. Man, you guys need to quit it. And stop listening to them seven days, Genesis. Seven, because it's, it's just seven days Genesis, because this is so much deception, man. I mean, just, just, it's really just outright foolery, is what it is. They taking the Bible and just making, just being foolish, using the Bible and just being foolish. You know, with all these rules, they come up with rules, come up with rules that ain't got nothing to do with the Bible. It clearly says here, Colossians 3 and 16, Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath. In other words, tell them, man, get on with me with that. Get on with me with that stuff. I eat what I want to eat. I'm a New Testament believer. I eat what I want to eat. I don't have to sit up all night waiting for a new moon, dance around the campfire anymore. I don't do that like we did in Africa before we came here, which is what got us in slavery. Should have been somewhere educating ourselves, building weapons to defend our, our people. But we don't do that stuff no more. You can go to church all you want to on the Sabbath. That's not going to save you. It's not going to save you. Because if you go to church on the Sabbath and you break one of those other commandments, you're lost. 
without Jesus Christ, you're lost. You go to church on the Sabbath all you want, and then you break one of those other commandments, you're guilty of breaking all of them, the Bible said. So don't do you no good. Don't do you any good to go to church on the Sabbath. I don't, I don't get it, man. You guys study this Bible, especially you people that study this Bible all the time. How do you get up thinking the way you think? It's pretty. This is pretty clear. But anyway, that's all I had to say. That's all I got to say on this. Um, uh, you can Christmas, man. You can celebrate Christmas anytime you want. There's no law. There's no scripture that says you can't. You can celebrate Christmas anytime you want. Anytime you want, you can celebrate uh, Halloween. You know, I don't believe a Christian should be celebrating because we know Halloween is the devil's. The the that's, that's the day Satan has set aside for him to celebrate. We know that. We shouldn't be participating in that. But now if you want to say, well, we're going to have a fall fest. We're going to get together and we're going to have a fall fest. As I said, let the world do what the world do. They want to dress up as demons and goblins and chase bears in the woods <coughs> or whatever they're doing. Let them, that's, that's what they're going to do. Let them do it. Okay? But on uh, Halloween, you said, well, we're going to have a we're going to have a uh, uh, fall fest. We're going to dress up in our farmer's clothes, straw hats, or whatever. And we're going to buy for apples. We're going to, you know, give thanks for the new harvest or whatever. Involve Christ in it. Okay, involve Christ in it. Keep it clean, spiritually clean, spiritually clean. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay? There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, you people I'm telling y'all, y'all better get to know this Bible because this, this deception is going to grow. Confusion is going to grow. You better get to know this word. I'm going I'm to talk some more. I'm really late making this video. I should have made it before Christmas. I don't know, man. Sometimes I'll just... I should be making more videos. I'm going to have to get out of the slump and make more videos. I just want to make sure, though, that when I make these videos, God is speaking. I believe God is speaking on this one. I believe God is speaking on this one. I, I, I try not to make them so long because I don't like listening to long videos myself, but I try not to make them so long. But uh, I try to make sure that God is speaking in these videos. Okay, and so I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk some more about love, and I'm gonna talk some more about uh, this this incident. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk. I think I am gonna talk some, some about this incident with T D Jakes and these other preachers. Man, it is so many false preachers out there. It is so many false teachers and false preachers, and they are they are misleading people by the millions. And Jesus Christ warned us. The disciples said, What would be the sign of your coming, Lord? The first thing, the first sign he gave them, you know what it was? Deceivers. A deceiver. Deception. That's the first one he gave them. Okay? I'm going to talk some more about that. All right. Get ready. Get ready for the harvest. The end time harvest. Okay. God is still speaking through visions and dreams. Yes, He is. Get ready. There's an end time harvest coming. We must be ready. There's an end time harvest coming. Oh, man. Okay. All right. God bless you all. And I pray that you don't get bored with this video. But, man, just be free from all that nonsense, man. All that legalism. Legalism. and We don't... We we're not we don't keep the Jew we don't keep the the we we're not Jew and the Judaism.
Okay, we're not into that. Okay? Uh, I don't keep those laws. I can't keep those laws. All those rituals and stuff. Ceremonies. All right? All right, God still speaking through visions and dreams. Yes, He is. Jesus Christ is soon to return. 